This is a true story set in the closing years of Hitler's Third Reich, of a concentration camp in Poland. This is the story of three remarkable young men, Morris, his brother Shlomo, and their cousin Dario. Slave workers in the gas chambers of a Nazi concentration camp. They weren't just prisoners, they were Sonderkommandos, special workers forced by the Germans to toil in the underground chambers, removing the dead and burning their bodies. Now for the first time, these last surviving Sonderkommandos are going back together, a return to a place of such horror and suffering, a journey that will call on all their strength as these final witnesses recall the final days at a camp called Auschwitz. There comes a time in a life when the fears and the terrors buried in the past have to be faced again. For Morris Venezia, that time is drawing close. Morris will soon be going back, back to a death camp in Poland, after 54 years returning to Auschwitz. He wasn't just a Jewish survivor, he was a Sonderkommando, a small cog in a machine constructed for the purpose of institutionalized mass murder. Working in the concentration camp, he is now one of the last eyewitnesses to the killing of hundreds of thousands of men, women and children. And the nightmares have never left him. I got the shaking on my body. I woke up with wet. All over wet. And so on, I opened my eyes. I said, oh my God, was that really? So now he's preparing to go back, exposing himself to memories buried for so long. A trip to the past that will colour his future. But there will be others who will join him on this voyage to help him bear the pain. Halfway around the world in Los Angeles, Dario Gabay is also ready to leave for Auschwitz. He is Morris's cousin, another Sonder commando. He worked alongside him in the gas chambers. I think Morris will find difficult and he will uh, have his own emotions. And, and nobody that goes there for after such a long time could not feel the emotions of coming back to, to a place where millions of people were dying. And there will be a third member of this remarkable family taking part in the return to the crematoria of Auschwitz. Morris's younger brother, Shlomo Venezia, made his home in Rome after the end of the war. He's been back to Auschwitz a dozen times. The youngest, and today the frailest of the three, he'll be the guide in a visit back to a place where there were no names only numbers. I have this number, 182727, and my brother has 182728. And Dario's Dar number is, I think, uh, before mine, I think, some with his brother. They went before us. For all three, their life's journey began here on the edge of the Aegean, at Salonica in northern Greece. This was once the Jerusalem of the Balkans. 70,000 Jews made their home here before the war. They worshipped at 40 synagogues. They said that on the Sabbath, Salonika was deserted. The Jewish community had its own hospital, its own schools, even its own fire brigade. The neighborhood I was born, Jewish neighborhood, 100% Jewish neighborhood almost, was called in Baron Hears. My brother was born over there, all my family, my, my brothers, 
born over there, we had a good time. They were poor people, but they liked to have fun. Wow. I remember those tramways, which across the street was the trains. And after that, they made the, the ghetto, the Jewish ghetto in that place. I was getting that tramway to go into Mizrahi to the Italian school. In the 30s, the noises from an emerging Germany, obsessed with its anti-Jewish propaganda, seemed almost an irrelevance in this Balkans backwater. But the war in Europe was about to sweep all that away. The Germans came in, and that uh, street for the Baron Hirsch neighborhood was closed. Germany invaded Greece in April 1941. In Salonika's Freedom Square, all Jewish men were rounded up and beaten. And it wasn't long before the trains started heading north. The entire Jewish population was on the move. The only thing we knew is that the Germans were sending us for a hard labor. Germany or Poland. We didn't know nothing else, but that they were killing in mass unprotected people, women, children, pregnant women. We could not imagine that that's imp something impossible for, for the humanity. They said that they will send us in one place where every family will have a house and the, the men, they will go to work and the women, they will stay home. I wasn't so concerned about what was going on. You know, I, we knew that 60,000 people or 54,000 people from Salonika went there. We knew that something was brewing, but nobody knew for sure what will be. Shlomo was 18 when the transport delivered him and his family to Auschwitz in April 1944. As a Sonder commando, his job, like the others, was to dispose of the bodies of those who perished in the gas chambers, feeding the crematorium with the Jews of Europe. My little sister, Marta and Marika, and my mother, when we arrived in Auschwitz, they selected to, to be a guest there and died in Auschwitz. Here is the family of my mother, the brother, the mother of my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather, and the two sisters here. They went all one year before me in Auschwitz and they died in Auschwitz. Here is the biggest brother of my mother with his wa with the wife. They went selected in Auschwitz in 43. This is a little cousin in that time from my big uncle. Uh, uncle, And they arrived there. It's the only the pictures I have. They took in 43 and sent to Auschwitz and they died. Died all in Auschwitz. Nobody's coming back in Greece. Dario Goodbye is very much a product of Los Angeles. Back in the camps, he was the weakest of the three and depended on the others to get him through. It left him with a lifelong obsession with physical fitness. That's why I come to the gym, because I want to have a quality life. Quantity doesn't mean anymore anything. I could go and work and make money, and, but it's enough for me. I want to have the strength not to go to a hospital, and I don't want to be sick. When I'm sweating at the gym, everything goes away. I don't know where I am. I'm a different man altogether. It just uh, brings me peace of mind and everything. I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know my problems are over. In Greece, Morris is heading towards the airport. To going back now, I don't think it's going to be too tragic because maybe the 
train rails, maybe they're still there, I don't know. Maybe Auschwitz building is still there. What can you find? The only thing is, I would like to go there to light a candle for my family. That's the most important to me. It will be very, very, very hard for him. I think uh, uh, he will come, now it's eight, I think it's uh, 78, 79. He will come back to, tw to 22, 23 years old. So it's very young, he was very, very young at that time. And I think it will be very, very hard for him uh, seeing all the things, especially in Birkenau. The feelings, you don't tell the feelings to anyone but yourself. Uh, for me, is what I read about Dante going to the inferno. That's, that's the way I'm going to go through these doors. No matter what, I will have that pain. We all three will be in the same boat at that point, you know. At Krakow Airport in southern Poland, Shlomo's flight from Rome is on time. Waiting for him, his brother Morris and cousin Dario. It is a moment for them all to remember. It will be the first time they've all been reunited since they left Auschwitz in 1945. Here you are! Hi, Hello. How are you? <laughs> my baby brother! That's my Hello. baby brother! <laughs> my baby brother! <laughs> How are you? All fine? All fine. Oh. 55 years. How you come? feel the area? 55 years. 55. How come you came so, so late? Late. I, I wait in uh, Warsaw. The last time they were together, they were young men. And that was a lifetime ago. Yeah. Here we are. Come on, come on. My baby brother, give my. me my baby. <laughs> to come down. You can see it's an old man. Eh? Yeah, that's all right. Like me, like okay. me, like Dario. <laughs> all men. together. All men no, men. You are... We are lucky to be all men. <laughs> <laughs> Go we are inside. survivors no matter what. <laughs> yes. Come on, come on, go on. April 1944. The transports carrying the last of the Jewish population from Greece has arrived in southern Poland pulling in to what is today just an overgrown stretch of track. In the distance, the gate of a sprawling camp whose name in those days meant nothing, Auschwitz. When stopped, we had not the time to think of what will be. We heard boom, open the doors of the, but so strong was, uh, and uh, the, all they says they would, uh, Dogs and so they be arouse, arouse, making like this, and nobody knows what to do. Shlomo and the others had arrived at the Jewish ramp, a railway siding that marked the end of the line for hundreds of thousands of people. It was there that the SS doctors made their selections as the people climbed down from the cattle trucks. Morris, Shlomo and Dario had shared the same freight car with their families in the 11-day journey from Greece. We were young, we can jump from there. It was high like this, one meter and a half, something like this. And I wanted to help my mother because she was not uh, old. She has maybe 43, 44, something like this. But we wanted to help them. Uh, the sister, the little one. And they started to take out all the people from the wagons. And they told us, the young people on one side, the old people on the other side. The only thing I remember is these two fingers. You know, going ten times this way, one time this way. Ten times to, to the gas chamber, one time going to, going to work. Left or right? Well, what I saw over there was that young people, they were taken to the left, and people, children, women, and pregnant women, and old people, are the right. They take from there 100 and some young girls, and the other, they began to go away. We didn't know where, what. To be honest, I used to love very much my mother. Very, very much. But I never gave her the satisfaction to show her how much I loved her. Never. I was cold. I ran off my line 
I went into my mother, I kissed her, and I went back. The first time in my life that I gave, I, I kissed my mother was that time. Was the first and last kiss. It was later that first night at Auschwitz that Morris and Shlomo discovered what had happened to their mother and sisters. As I spoke a little German, I find another prisoner, a Polish one, who spoke uh, Yiddish. And I say to him in German, where my uh, relatives are, my mother, the sisters, and so, he, didn't, he takes me from my arm, he come with me. And the same place, from the window of this place, he shows me the chimney here, you know, from the crematorium. You see this flower, the, the flames and the smoke and so? All those people who didn't come with you are coming out from the chimney here. The next day, the three were selected for work, forced to participate in the process that killed their mother and sisters as Sonder commandos, clearing the dead from the gas chambers and burning the bodies. These drawings were sketched by another Sonder commando who recorded their daily duties. This is my first impression, you know. I see the people that they just saw in my life, you know, going there. I see all that transport, whatever, 1,500 or 2,000 people, with the kids, the, the mother, the kids in their arms, some black and blues from the gas, you know, dead. I say to myself, this is where I, my mind went blind. I says, how can I survive to such an environment? Unbelievable what we saw over there. About five, six feet of dead bodies or women. In the meantime, they gave me a, a scissors to cut, and Morris was there too at that time. And I said to him, where, where is God? And this was where they started their day, in the cavernous underground changing rooms. As the trains arrived, up to 2,000 people at a time would shuffle in. It was the Sonder Commando's job to help them undress and lead them to the showers. These computer-generated graphics, never seen before, are built up from the original German architect's plans of the extermination facility. One day, the three of them recognized two of their cousins waiting to enter the gas chamber. And I was down in this undressing room, and I heard, Shlomo, Shlomo, and I was upset. One of them was a big merchant in Salonika, a tall man, maybe six something. And all of a sudden, you see this, uh, these two people, you know, coming. They are already <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and they began to speak to me. He knows that the crematorium is finished, and he says to me to go to the officer, to the SS and to tell him maybe he can save my life, says to me. I told him, it's the same thing for you, for me, for them. Now are you, later I will be, or the German will be. Try, 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 okay. It was not far away, this Unterscharfierer, he has here white, like under officer. And I spoke, I said, in German. And I said to him, I have eine Cousine for my father. Bitte, vielleicht kann man ihm helfen, vielleicht kann man ihm raten, das Leben. Which is, uh, maybe we can uh, 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 make something uh, to, to live him in life, not to... He makes me like this. Ah, he makes... It's alles scheiß egal. This is the three words he says to me. This is the same thing for, for, for everybody. I came back to, to him and I told Le, Leone, maybe it has nothing to do. And we told them that they are going to die and they are going to, they ask us anything to eat. Well, we brought them whatever we had and they, they ate plenty. I told him, come on. He began to ask me, how, will, how long will it take 
You, you understand that how long will take if I will suffer? Uh, how comes how will be? Surely I cannot tell him you will suffer or you will uh, make like this. We told him to where to go to die fast, where the the gas will coming down, so they can. Uh, <clears throat> They don't have to suffer. You know, if you got on the corner, it takes four or five minutes to die instead of two minutes. I told him, you will not feel nothing. You are the last one. It was really the last one. And uh, we was near the, window, the door, and I didn't know how to say to him, bye or what. He's going inside, close the door, the German. We put him up with the elevator, we saw him dead, we put him in the, we died, we put him in the oven. But what we did for him was we cleaned the oven for the rest of the ashes over there. And we got his ashes and Barufenetia ashes. We put him in a can, in a container, and we took him out in a place over there. And we bury him over there. And we read the Kaddish. I don't know what they're saying. It's a kind of a prayer for dead people. Back in their Krakow hotel, taking strength from each other, they are able to share these memories. Listen, when I, we were working at the crematorium, remember in the beginning, we were taking the dead bodies and putting down on the floor, not to hit his head yeah. and so on, and we were so afraid. And then, we became from a different world, you know. We came from a different world, and little by little, you know, we became we became we became animals, animals too. But the time for reflection is nearly over. Tomorrow morning, for the first time together, they will return to Auschwitz. For the three, Auschwitz and its adjoining death camp here at Birkenau was not just a place of imprisonment, but the place where their parents, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts had died. So many had passed this way to perish in the gas chambers at the end of the line. We are all three of us. I can't believe it. The first time, my brother, Morris, and you, Dario. I can't believe it. Don't, don't uh, you have now to think that we are in life, and so you you don't believe. You can understand the other people; they cannot believe anymore. Okay, you have to be, to be strong enough, and uh, come on, boy, come with me, come. I am the youngster, and uh, I don't think to be stronger than you, but you must be strong because. Uh, otherwise, it's finished the life for us. The deeper they venture into this place, the more vivid the memories, the more powerful the emotions. My feeling was always when I, I came around here that it's like, a, it's like a virus and it's dormant. And here, coming back from here, that virus, you know, gets up again and the feeling is that I can't believe it that really I'm, I'm alive going through again through these gates. It reminds me again how we lost everybody just going through these gates. What is left of Birkenau fails to convey the sheer size and scale of the death camp. This is how it looked when Dario, Morris and Shlomo arrived in the spring of 1944. 160,000 people were held here, most employed as slave labour. 
the rail lines running to the very entrance of the gas chambers, where at the height of the camp's murderous efficiency, they were being put to death at the rate of 12,000 a day. There is little left of the gas chambers and their crematoria. They were destroyed by the Germans in the closing months of the war. For all three of them, this was their place of work for the 10 months they spent at Birkenau. Crematorium number two. It was a vehicle marked with a red cross that brought the gas canisters to the chamber and the fires burnt night and day. But Schlomer can still make sense of it all, walking down the steps where tens of thousands once passed into the underground dressing room. Last stop before the gas chamber. Then they come inside, the mothers uh, help the, the kids to hundreds, and they put everything in the, in the hangers with the numbers. And then you have, I remember the faces of the, those people, they didn't know where they are. They, they see something, they don't understand what, what's happened, what will be. And the Germans, they said that this is the shower, to go to take a shower, and then everybody will come back, and we'll find uh, it's the number, they have to remember the number, and you will find your addresses and something like this. And so, and then if the people, they have to do it rush, you know, and to go inside, which is the door was the entrance, not direct in the gas chamber, the showers, but a little, like a little room, which was on the left side, a door, which enters to the, let me see, showers. That was the shower, but no water in the showers. And the women and the kids, they entered first of all. They wait under the shower, that the water is never come. And so they they begin to see other people coming inside until it was full. I mean, uh, uh, after the half uh, this uh, gas camera, they begin to think about what's happened. The water is not coming. What shall we do here? Maybe something not uh, correct, something like this. And they wanted to come from there to come back here, but in the door wo were two uh, SS men and they beat the people to, to send it back. So in between there are coming more people from the undressing room coming and one push the other. So and then they begin to understand what was here. The other the rest men outside, they close, he closed the door and the, all the people, all the transport were inside. And after, sometimes they wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it depends. He opens like this. The cement you see here, he opens and the, we help him to, 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 to open it because alone he cannot do it. It was very heavy. We were too, sometimes I was also in this place and he opens the, the, the box of the gas and he puts inside and then we close again the little part of this place and the man, the assessment is going away. After eight or ten minutes, everybody was died inside. The, the gas chamber, as I understand that, is after they were coming in. For Morris and Dario, it is also confusing. They were going... Maybe from this place? From They're trying to make sense of the geography of the place finding their way in a landscape they'd spent decades trying to forget. Anyhow, the railroad station was up to there. I never spoke, really. This is the first time I am speaking about it. And one day, they brought also three little guys, maybe two months, three months, something like this. Babies? Babies. Babies alone, babies, without yeah. the mothers. Ubra Ramin. With the mother, they were with the yeah, mothers. They, yeah. they brought it yeah. here with, usual, the, yeah. with the truck, with the car. Yeah. This tall German one, it says, who was the this worst. This tall animal, here. say it. Yes. 
it takes the carabin. I had to, to take the three. First, he tries with two. One day, two. With one shot, he kills two together, one after the other. He comes from here, yeah. comes out here, right. goes inside, and then. And he wants to try with three to save one bullet, you know. So he ta I take three together, and the, the babies, they, they stay not so they fall, one the head here, one the head there. They have to take yeah. to be, to be straight. The, and he shots one, he kills two. Yeah. And the third one makes something here, but he doesn't. He didn't die. He didn't. Yeah. And put it down, the two, of the first two were died. Yeah. The third one begins to make, ga, ga, Crying, yeah. gun, and I saw the blood coming out. And I, I told the German, in German I told yeah. him, Warum schießen sie nicht? Auch die Kleine soll fertig sein, soll sterben. Mm -hmm. uh, it, will, it means to, to, to shoot, uh, the, uh, to make finish, to, to yeah, die. To, to, to he, has, he says to me, I have not uh, to... Uh, more bullets. No, I don't want to... To, to spend the bullet. To spend another bullet. And the twist come all blood from there, slowly, slowly. And, and he's going to die. <laughs> I Jesus never, Christ. never, never, no. This is terrible. I never say these things. The memorial to those hundreds of thousands who died just a few feet from here is a stark, almost brutal pile of stone. All three want to remember their parents, their brothers and sisters who died by something more meaningful. And it is Shlomo who has held them together in this return to Auschwitz, who leads them in the Kaddish, the Jewish prayer for the dead. Okay. Now, I don't want to go there because... No, I can't go there, I can't go there. You wanted to do this and then I can I can I can this is my family. Hi. Yeah. Ale, ale. Ah. Okay. I am Rico. Yes, Dario. I am little brother and I have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They killed them? This is 42 years old mother. They killed them. Uh. 12 years old sister. 9 years old sister. And then the uncles, oh, brother. That was the first candle in 60 years. I put the candles for you too, <laughs> for you and for me. The wrought iron inscription over the main gate into Auschwitz reads, Arbeit macht frei. Work makes you free. It makes me a very, very big impression to see this, the Arbeit macht frei. But it was a cruel yeah, promise yeah. to the hundreds of thousands of prisoners who had no chance of survival. As we told the before, concentration camp band played stirring military this. marches as the slave laborers staggered out of the main gate for another day of work. To me, this was the camouflage of the, the camp. This In one side music, at the other one, at the other side they were killing us. They were, they were. Dario, Morris and Shlomo spent nearly a month confined to these barracks before being transferred to work in the crematoria at nearby Birkenau. The extermination factory here survived this intact. The, the, a much smaller the, version of the gas chambers idea. where the three worked. And this was the gas chamber. All, you see, you have another one, the hall where they put the gas inside. And I don't remember 
Well, maybe now we do it this way, some kind of a pipes looking like a shower or not. I don't remember that. I there were four showers, there were four showers they all were around, for, yeah. Exactly four showers, yeah. But in the middle, like yes, like a but shower. Not over here. No, here yeah, no. it was like, like, like this, no shower. This sure. was for God. Yeah, yes. for God. But how many people over here? 300, 400, it depends, 500, it depends how... Or big enough. Yes. For Morris, his presence here brought back more memories. The day he discovered a child alive in the chamber. So when we opened the doors, we heard a baby crying, like a miracle. We started to take over the dead people from there to see where is the baby crying. And we saw a baby on top of the dead bodies. Maybe his mother, I guess, when she was dying, he took the, the baby and he, he, she put him up, you know. And then he was right on top of the dead bodies, that kid. And somebody of us called the German, we said, the baby. The German didn't care about it, went over there, one shot, and that's it. One shot in the head, the baby was dying. In an adjoining room, the ovens that disposed of the dead, exactly the same as they all used at Birkenau. You see? Yeah. When you push with this inside, yeah, with it, they're coming down. Yeah, the body was going right away here. here yeah. Right away from I here. Think, yeah, down. I think they were putting the body away here and with this pushing in. Yeah. The administration center of Auschwitz has now been turned into a museum. Behind the glass, some of the possessions of the 1.1 million people who died here. Hundreds of people visit Auschwitz every day. Few get to meet those who once worked here. This is Dario, my cousin, and this is my brother Shlomo. Every one of us. Every one of us. They got the number. number. The number. See? You see the number. This is our number. That was in Birkenau. Because how old are you now? I'm 77. I'm 78. 76. 76, 77, 78. We were at that time about 22, 23 years old. I was 19, 20 in that time. Right. And there is a change in Morris, earlier so traumatized by it all. Today he finds the strength to lead the group. They're going to kill us. The time all of you were civil or prisoner of war? No, 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 civil. No, we're Jewish. Jewish. We're Jewish people from Greece. Mm. We're Jewish from Greece. They took us from Salonika and Athens and some islands too. In a minor country where I born, we were living in a Jewish community, 65,000 people. Six, from the 65,000, they came back only one and a half percent. The trip back to Auschwitz had changed them all. It was a reunion That's they had all feared, but one which they had survived with each other's help. But they have now to deal with uncomfortable questions. Looking back, did they feel a sense of shame for the work they were forced to carry out as Sonder commandos? And seeing this mass of people coming in and out day after day, you know, and get butchered and gassed and, and going, and we were doing the work. How can you have a peace of mind? It's very, very tough. No matter how our appearances are, you know, inside of us there's somebody else. By early 1945, with the Russians advancing on Auschwitz, the Germans cleared the camp of its 60,000 inmates. It was the start of a long death march towards the German border. Those too weak to keep up were shot where they lay in the snow.
the marching I remember was day and night, all night long, and uh, uh, there were people they couldn't walk. The, ar the the army was behind us, and they were shooting them if you can walk. So we, I walk and we walk, and was very very cold. And I, I said to myself, "Oh, beautiful Athens, you know, with the sunshine." And could you imagine that I start sweating? I, that is, that is, I think, the mind, and uh, uh, I couldn't believe it. Those who survived the march were loaded onto trains heading for Germany. On board the open-top freight cars, there was not enough room for all to shelter. Dressed in cotton clothes in sub-zero temperatures, those forced to stand would freeze to death before the night was over. And it was here that Morris discovered how Auschwitz had changed him. You want to hear something? What we did, we didn't care about because it was your life, uh, your death, my life. Over there was go we were about four or five Greek people sitting in the corner of the wagon with a kind of blanket on top of our head because it was snowing, it was so cold. So there were so many people in one wagon. If you would get up, you could sit down anymore because you won't find the place anymore. So much. I remember one guy who came over there, and he was a German, but a prisoner. And he had a sack on his shoulder. And he came over there. He wanted to sit. He couldn't stand no more up. He said, I got some cigarettes. If you let me sit down, I'm a smoker. I was given many times my bread to have a couple of cigarettes. Where are them? Where are them? I don't know. He didn't give me not even a pack of cigarettes, four or five cigarettes. So I got up and he sat down. The cigarette was gone in, in, in 30 minutes. No, I want to sit down. Why should I? We got him by his head, you know. We suffoc suffocated him and then threw it out of the wagon. We killed him and threw him out of the train. Was a German anyway. Morris and Shlomo Venezia and Dario Gabay were finally liberated in April 1945 as the concentration camps in Germany were overrun by the Americans. It had been exactly a year since they'd been transported from Greece to the camps. Dario weighed less than 100 pounds when he was set free. Out of 1,200 Sonder commandos, less than 90 had survived the war. Today, Morris spends most of his time at his home near Salonika in northern Greece. He had arrived back from Poland the night before, still deeply affected by what he had seen. This evening, Morris is to be guest of honor at a welcome home party. Twenty friends gather in his garden to toast his safe return, but his heart isn't in it. And as it turns out, this was not a visit he would ever repeat. No, I will never go back again. I will never go back again because uh, it, it was a very bad, very bad uh, experience. I won't go over there now for a million dollars anymore because it makes me feel so bad and to bring back my memories from so many years ago. And the party goes on without him. Morris spends most of the evening alone with his thoughts. Shlomo came back to his apartment on the south side of Rome, more determined than ever to return to Auschwitz. I have to come. I have to come back again. I live in Rome, as you know, and uh, I see every day it's worse and worse because there are so many things written in the walls, uh, Juderhaus or something, swastika, you know what you said. And 
it's uh, important because the students, they then, it's not written nothing in the books, history books in the school, it's not written nothing about uh, the war, uh, 40, 40, 45. And so they have uh, to learn what was uh, happening this time. I am very glad that I went this time because at that point we are telling to the world that we are the only eyewitnesses to the final solution of the Jewish people. And I don't think anybody else could be telling the story. Our wounded souls will die with it. You can never forget these things. Back in Poland, before they went their different ways, Dario, Morris and Shlomo had one last duty to perform, gathering on the banks of the Vistula River. For all of them, this had a special poignancy. It was here that the Germans dumped the ashes of those burnt in the ovens. It is as close as they could get to the final resting place of their brothers and sisters and parents. Let's have a minute of silence for our families they are right here Oh.